Tarzan of the Apes, brought to you from out the pages of Edgar Rice Burroughs' wonderful book. I am sure, monsieur, the blacks must have camped here for the night. For that, signs of a fire. And there, a broken gourd. Then if it was one of this party who shot the arrow, he probably left the camp. And indulged in a little archery practice, Clayton? <laughs> That's as good a reason for land as any I can Monsieur, think. you must not seek for reason in what these blacks do. They have a mentality far below that of a six-year-old child, and their reasoning, tonnerre, it is nothing. Uh, uh, then, uh, Monsieur Darno, you infer that if one of them decided to shoot an arrow into the hut, he would do it? Oui, monsieur. That is precisely my meaning. And I believe there are from 40 to 50 of them in the party. In which case, we should be able to handle them nicely. Mais non, monsieur. Even if we outnumbered them 10 to 1, here in the jungle, they are at home. Very much at home. But surely our rifles against their bows and arrows, even if the arrows are pointed. Ah, monsieur Clayton, of what use is a rifle if one cannot see that which one wishes to shoot? These blacks move as silently as the night itself. They will hide in the trees and pick us off one by one if we permit them to do so. Uh, then it would seem that the most sensible thing for us is not to get separated. It is our only chance, except that I am using éclaireur, what you call scouts, who will warn us of approach. And now, monsieur, a request. Yes, uh, what is certainly, it? My certainly, my dear, dear no matter what the circumstance. No matter what you believe to be the provocation, as long as I am with you, do not shoot without my orders. But great Scott, man. We can't stand idly by and watch if we're attacked. We shall not stand idly by, mon ami. But I am the only member of the party who speaks the dialect. I would much prefer to talk my way out of any situation. But if that should fail, alors, we fight. Uh, you have my word, Lieutenant. And mine, Dono. Et vous, Monsieur Clayton? I suppose so, Dono. Although I feel that I can use discretion. Je vous remercie. I knew I could depend upon Monsieur Clayton. Then, it is agreed. We will be as quiet as possible. But there are places we will be forced to cut our way through. Jungle so dense that it seems like an impossible barrier. Uh, by the way, Darno. Uh, in case of a poisoned arrow, uh, uh, what is the poison and what the antidote, if any? A very wise question, Monsieur le Professeur. The poison, I do not know. It is made from herbs. It is a fluid which, if it comes in contact with one oh so little a wound, is death. Regular witch's brew. <laughs> I do not know what that is, our witch's brew. But to save oneself. A tight bandage above and below the wound, and a sharp knife to cut away the poisoned flesh. And if it becomes necessary to suck the poison from the wound? Then, wash out the mouth with this solution which I always carry in my medical kit, or some of this very strong French brandy as a mouthwash. Oh, uh, we shall remember it. I wouldn't mind a little of that French brandy. An overstimulation, my dear Philander, I have always told you, is highly injurious. For well, myself. I'll risk the injury. To Jane Porter, carried along at unbelievable speed in Tarzan's arms, the distant blast of the steamer's siren brings conflicting emotions. It signalizes the rescue of her father, Philander Clayton, and herself. But does she wish to be rescued? She looks up into the ape man's face. The fine features, unmarred by dissipation, were her guarantee that he would never harm her. And she's strangely content. On and on they speed through what appears to be a solid mass of verdure, yet scarcely a leaf touches her, as if by magic the way seems to open before this forest god. We must be close, White Skin. Without slackening his speed, Tarzan looks down into Jane's face. Close? Close? Yes, White Skin. Close. Sunlight suddenly pours through the breaks in the trees. They're at the clearing. Tarzan holds Jane with one strong bronzed arm as he drops quickly from limb to limb to the ground. Jane opens her eyes to find herself on the moss-carpeted jungle floor. She points through the more openly spaced trees. The hut! There's the hut! Hut? Yes. Yes, White Skin, the hut. Jane, go hut. White Skin, go hut. Tarzan slowly shakes his head. An indescribable longing overcomes the ape man. This she, Jane, wishes to leave him. To return to her own kind. Come, White Skin. Quick, go, hut. Again, Tarzan shakes his head. 
The law of the jungle is that he should hold her by force. But had he, Tarzan, not killed Turkoz, the bull ape, because he had taken this white she, Jane, by force? Tarzan himself does not know that it is the centuries of breeding, warring against a lifetime spent in the wild and winning, that compels him to act as he does. Jane goes toward the hut. She looks back over her shoulder to Tarzan. Come, white skin. Go to hut. Jane, go to hut. Tarzan stands still, watching. Jane looks out to sea. The steamer is fast disappearing into the blue of the horizon. The steamer! The steamer is going away! Oh, am I too late? Quickly, she runs across the clearing to the hut. Daddy! 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 Empty. Everything gone. Great Hook Diary. Gone, too. And all the papers. Oh, that means... That means that Pedro must have taken them with him. It means that I am all alone. Oh, Daddy. Daddy. Why, why could you have waited? So left a note. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose it's natural. They thought I was dead. And the steamer came. Daddy always said steamers won't wait. So they went. And now, Jane... Back to the jungle and white skin. As Jane Porter drops the locking bar into place, she turns tear tear dimmed eyes toward the departing steamer. To her, not knowing that her father, Philander, Clayton, and Darno are in the jungle, the disappearing steamer means the cutting of the last tie between herself and civilization. She glances behind her at the hut. She would much rather live there than in the treetops, but her whole safety, her very life, now depends on white skin. Oh, white skin, you'll have to look after me. You're all I've got left. Jane runs across the clearing and throws herself into the ape man's arms. Tarzan holds the weeping girl to him. Gently, he smooths the tumbled curls. Tarzan cannot talk, cannot say what is in his heart, but he understands. Jane has been hurt. Not a hurt that can be bathed in cooling water, but a hurt that only words can help. And Tarzan does not have the words. Jane, go quick. White skin, go quick. Tarzan sweeps his hand toward the treetops. Jane looks up at him and tries to smile through the tears. The events of the past week stumble through her mind. Surely not events to cry about, she thinks. If white skin had not saved her father from the lion... If he'd not saved her from her cause, oh, surely she can depend upon white skin to be her protector. Jane, go quick. White skin, go quick. Yes, white skin. Jane, white skin, go quick. And with the unruffled mien that characterizes this lost heir to the house of Greystoke, Tarzan lifts Jane from her feet, grasps a trailing vine, and easily, gracefully swings Jane with him into the trees. Meanwhile, far off in the ever-increasing denseness of the jungle, Darno's safari cut and hacked their way. Now, oh, utterly impossible to find one's way without a compass. You're right, Clayton. Almost unbelievable, the thickness of this tall grass. Uh, and, Philander, equally unbelievably... Uh, ha! Uh, it will soon be dark, and to move in the dark is to invite disaster. And so, monsieur, it is the hero that for tonight we shall cast. Well, is as late as that? Really, I hadn't thought so. Uh, Monsieur Clayton has labored valiantly. That is why the time has passed so quickly. Come, mes enfants, on bivouac. It is here that we will spend the night. Uh, I hate to admit it, but I am tired. Take a good night's rest, Clayton. Uh, uh, and some strong coffee, Clayton, will work wonders. Uh, I'm not so sure about a fire here. Oh, Adano. 
What about a fire? Safe, I think. Now, I have not heard anything of the black... <laughs> The blacks! I just said that we had not heard them, and then this. But what can we do? Do nothing but 